Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Grace's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's jump right back in. Um, there's some, gonna be some problems with this gold they found, because that looks like some German gold. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, I forget what year this takes place, but I definitely think this takes place quite a bit before World War World War Two, so World War One. Yeah, I think this is like World War One and such, if I, if I remember correctly. This is going to lead to some problems. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Also, y'all, I am feeling wonderful. All right, all right. I'll admit the Kaiser's in no position to ask for his gold back. We still can't just pay for whiskey and pasties and gold bars, no matter how much I'd love to see Bulgaria's face if we tried. Don't worry, I can melt the gold down with my fire. Huh? My jaw about hits the beach. You breathe, you breathe fire. Of course not. Oh, okay. Of course not, silly. I'm not a dragon. Stop focusing on the details and look at the big picture. My sisters, your grand, they'll be set for life, as are we. This gold is our ticket to freedom. Everything is happening far too fast. Just how Grace likes it. Grace, what do you mean by freedom? Malcolm, don't you remember how it was right before I left? How it felt like something was missing? Something wasn't right between us? This will solve it. How, Grace? We can't buy happiness. No, but we can buy privacy. Time alone. Time to reconnect. I can take you away with me. We'll find a quiet place all to our own. Just you, me, and the sea. Once again, the sea vies for my time with this woman. I'm not sure relocating will solve anything. And anyway, I have no one to take care of Gran. We've been over this, Grace. You and I just can't run away together. You make it sound like a crime. I'm talking about a vacation. It doesn't have to be forever. Once you see the open seas, you'll fall in love with it. I don't remind her I've crossed the open seas before. The circumstances were hardly similar. Oh. Oh, the West Indies. Grace reaches into her blouse and produces the soggy brochure for the West Indies from her cash. It's possible. Together. Think of all the relaxing we could do. She leans, for she leans toward me, alluringly pouty. And I have to shift my trousers a bit. This one is a schemer, all right. Maybe money can buy ha can buy happiness. Perhaps Grace is right. A change of scenery would help us both, especially such a tropical location. It would feel like the lap of luxury, but what would Gran do? Grace's eyes grow larger. You want to go? I, I didn't say. Oh God. Crushed. She already scooped me up, kissing me with abandon. Truth be told, I longed to kiss her more passionately, to assure her she's more desir desirous than ever. But I had been the one to tell her we need to halt our intimacy, to avoid any risk of growing, of growing her, of her growing larger. Every day I want to break that promise, but I haven't, not to fear. This voyage of Grace's, I don't see how it will solve my dilemma, but I see the toothy grin spread across Grace's face, and I know she's happy, the happiest I've seen her in a long while. I can't say no to her. All right, let's leave behind our worries for a while. That's the spirit. Each worry is just on their ballast stone weighing you down. It's high time we lighten the load and sail away. Must everything be a nautical metaphor with you? That's what you get with your best with your best friend as a sea creature. No matter what the metaphor, my sea creature is right. I need a break, a real one. I want the woman I love. I'm sick of letting, letting my life slip by here in this village, even if I have no idea as to the consequences of leaving. The glint of gold catches my eye, and I let myself relax in Grace's arms. I'm sure everything will work itself out. Oh, really now? Huh. I, mean, I hope it does, but... That would be a little boring story, wouldn't it? <laughs> I pet quietly over several days in the still of night. Grace and I tackle what is left to refurbish the ship and stock it for a long voyage. The gold we move into safekeeping. Turns out converting treasure into spending money is difficult, but not insurmountable. After a few vague inquiries in the stag and nanny, Bulgare deduces that I, not only, uh, that, I know, that I not only know about Grace's changes, but I'm also planning to leave town with her. Given that Bulgare already knows so much, it's an easy decision to invite my confidant to our little cabal and our scheme. Over a co-conspiratorial brew, he shares a tale of this Boer war days, serving with a man who believed Aglaistig was destined to be his wife. I listen curiously, unsure of the significance. Eventually, Bulgare divulges that yes, he has a contact who can help, he doesn't confirm that this is the fellow infatuated with the Glastig, and will only say it's a friend. Departure. One second, y'all. Water time! Hmm. Oh, Lord. Yes. 
and promised the gold bars would magically turn into currency in no time, and I know better than to ask more. I only ask that he uses his cut of the treasure discreetly, and not to turn the stag and nanny into the gaudiest pub in Scotland. On that, he offers no promises. But he does assure me that Gran and the MacLeods will receive their fair share while we're away, and that he will check in on them regularly. Oh, and we all get free drinks for life. It's a promise he may regret now that Grace quite literally drinks like a fish. I wonder what Jessie would have made of all this had she stayed working at the stag and nanny. She's in for quite the surprise should she return. The thought of Jessie coming home to more riches than she'd sought out brings a smile to my face. All this thanks to her quiet, unsuspecting little sister. Marion takes the news of her departure hard, as we knew she would. Grace, sh Grace shares that Grace shares that her si that Grace shares that she and her sister had a heart to heart by the lock one night. When Marion came to, after fainting once more at the sight of Grace's newest changes, I'm told she reluctantly agreed it would be best if Grace left before their father returned home. What else was said, I don't know. Grace is hesitant to share more. I only hope the sudden windfall is some recompense for the ordeal Marion has been through. With the majority of preparations taken care of, all that remains is the thing I've been dreading the most, addressing the grand situation. Poor Gran. Oh boy. So let me get this straight. You and Grace are leaving to find Owen McLeod, so that you can ask the old numpty for his daughter's hand in marriage? Yes, exactly that. So much for telling the truth, unable to meet Grand's squinting gaze I turned to Marion for backup. You need Fred Agnes. I'll stay with you while they're away. Douglas and I will take good care of you. Marion knows the real story, but is fine with keeping this one mum. Even she agrees this is the type of situation that is best left away from Grand's ear. And the fact she's willing to watch Gra watch Grand while we are gone, sometimes I wonder if Marion is an angel we don't deserve. Where will you find Owen? Why can't you wait until he returns? Why can't you just ask for forgiveness rather than permission? They've received letters, Agnes. They're headed to Glasgow to meet him when he arrives. Rain is a remarkable liar when she wants to be. I'm glad she's on our side. And that takes weeks. We just we don't just have an we don't we just don't have an exact date. Father will be so happy to see them and have company on his return to Acne Craig. And there's lots to see in the city. I hear they have a jazz club now. As now as I nervously sip tea, I give Marion a look to indicate she can cut back on the tail now. I just don't understand. And where on earth is Grace? I haven't seen her in so long. Is she avoiding me? Is she showing? Um. Tea sputters out of my mouth as I choke. So Grand thinks Grace is with child and that we're rushing down the aisle. As evasive as, as, evasive as we've been, I, can't, I guess I can't blame her for drawing that conclusion. I don't have any motivation to introduce Grand to her faux future granddaughter. She's showing me the world, Grand. I'm excited to travel under better circumstances. Bring her over before you leave. I want to give her a hug. We'll do our best. She's been very... Stop with the white lies. If she doesn't want to see me, that's her decision. I can't tell Gran that it's Grace we don't want her to, we don't want her to see. She's nervous about the trip. Seeing you would only make her cry, Gran. Lies heaped upon lies. I can't help lie. I can't keep lying forever, but that is a problem for another day. I'd best head home to finish packing. Douglas will help me bring my bags over. And he'll watch your home. Yes, he'll be by from time to time, too. He loves a good game of whist. Thank goodness for Douglas. Perhaps he can be the better grandson and take over what I failed to do the past few months. Oh, that boy, such a darling. He sure is great. The flatness of my tone thankfully goes unnoticed. It'd be lovely time. We'll bake so many treats. Malcolm and Grace will mistake your home for a pastry shop when they return. Oh, Thor, don't encourage my sweet tooth. Oh. As she scoops Gran into a hug, Marion casts a sympathetic glance from the old mare's shoulder. She, as much as anyone, knows how hard it is when family members go their separate ways. Oh, one second, y'all. All right. You'll be in good hands. I'll see you very soon, Agnes. Aw. Door closes and Gran and I are left alone. I take a deep breath and hold her bird-like hands in my own. Gran, I'll be back. It's an unexpected trip. It's what you need to take. Stay as long as you like. Write me a letter if you have time. I only wish I had the money to buy you a brownie. A brownie? The Ameri- Ooh, excuse me. The American camera. Aha! Maybe I'll be able to take pit. Maybe I'll be able to take pictures. You never know. Please do if you can. Take me on adventures from the security of my armchair, Malcolm. She laughs and I squeeze her hands tightly, warming them in mine. Would you like me to get you a gift? Malcolm, you are my gift. Just return in one piece. I need you. I choke up hearing her admit this. I can stay, Gran. Just give me the word. No, no you can't. I only meant to say I need you to tell me when the wedding is happening. You need to begin your new life with your bride. Gran, we're not married yet. No, but she's your person. My fish person. Treat her like the queen she is. 
You have to love your wife just a little bit more than she loves you. That's what makes a relationship work. Gran, you're wise beyond your years. I miss you every day. I'm not dead, Malcolm. I'll see you as soon as you return. Gran and I embrace among a steady stream of tears. It'll be a hard goodbye, but I remind myself I'll just be on holiday. And I've got big things ahead of me. Oh, goodness. So it looks like they're going on a journey. Should be interesting. Um, I wonder if we actually do get to leave the location and go elsewhere. It's amazing how much of this game I've covered, and there's still so much more they have planned for this game. It's, it's crazy. It's incredible. The day of our departure dawns, and I gather my things to the rhythm of Grant's snores, wondering how I will wish her farewell without causing us both even more heartache. I do not waken Gran as I walk out the front door. I'll miss you too, Miss Hazel. To my surprise, the mayor actually seems sad for my departure. It's quite the change of heart from her usual aloof behavior. They say animals can pick up on emotions better than humans. Perhaps she can read how much this is weighing on me. I'll be back soon. In the meantime, Douglas and Marion will treat you well, if you do the same for them. <laughs> Hazel huffs in reluctant agreement. I put my hand on her velvet muzzle, and for once she leans into me, showing a tenderness I've never seen from her before. A sudden show of affection is bewildering, but a welcome. It gives me hope that maybe one day we'll get along after all. With one last pet and a carrot as a peace offering, I lock the paddock door. Hazel whinnies as I go. It's all I can do to stop myself from turning around to go back to the safety of home. But I continue, and eventually a weight lifts off my shoulders. The knot in my stomach has shrunk to a more manageable lump, and that I can handle. Yeah, I can 100% understand how Malcolm feels, because this is basically what I did. I left home. I left it behind everything I knew. And I traveled across the entire country. Just taking such a massive risk. Will it work out? I don't know, y'all. But hey, as long as I'm alive, I'll be here to make content for y'all. So... You know, he's hoping the best in the future. Anyway. I walk to the lock with a full heart, so alive with the brightness of welcoming a new journey. Oh. Oh, Lord, there's Douglas. And Marion. At the shore, I'm surprised to find a farewell party waiting for me. The Elder McLeod sister seems lost in thought, and Douglas, well, who knows what's going on beneath all that hair. Well, Gare, of course, is chipper as ever. Good morning, lad. All prepared for your voyage? I toss my bags into the boat and place the vase upon the cairn, signaling Grace my arrival. As ready as I'll ever be. That's the spirit. The greatest tales ever written start out with a leap into the unknown. And you're certainly diving in head first, eh? The calm before. Oh, Lord. Oh, you're gonna have some bad things happen, I guess. Aye, oh, it sure feels that way. Douglas speaks up with considerably less levity. Malcolm, how's your knowledge of open ocean sailing? I've never sailed beyond the lock. I've been reading up, though. Reading is reading's no substitute for experience, lad. The ocean, she's not so tame as Loch Finley. He's not wrong. Marion starts to pale and fidget, reflecting my own hidden concern. I try to reassure the group. It's a good thing I'll have one of the ocean's kin as a guide. The sailor's shoulders sag. Lad, I know you're spent with that creature of yours. She's my sister, Douglas. Very well, the charming young fish lady, then. I do not judge. I myself, myself were enamored of the sea till this fair maiden came along. Marion blushes deeply, and I exchange a helpless look with Bogare. But I'll see again. She's no ordinary lass. You not find a feistier soul in all of Scotland. And the man who follows her beyond the protection of this lock takes his life into his own hands. Douglas, I trust her. She's... Nope, oh, there she is. The smartest creature he knows. <laughs> Grace whacks her tail in the water, dousing Douglas. He whips his head around and scowls. This could mean trouble. A hellion shall be! The largest nymphy goblin I've ever seen! Call her a nymphy goblin? Nymphy goblin? Huh, maybe that's exactly what I am. <laughs> Alright now, lads and lasses, let's calm down. There's work to be done. Listen to the ocean, Campbell. She'll tell you a great deal more than your own eyes. And certainly more than that, that engorged sylph. <laughs> Grace smiles wider than I've ever seen. Marion shakes her head as she approaches me. You keep her out of trouble, won't you, Malcolm? There's no stopping her, but yes, I'll do my best. 
I pull her into a tight hug and I can feel her tears against my cheeks. Our worlds are turned upside down and we cling to this final bit of familiarity one last time. Thank you for everything. You'll keep Gran out of trouble too, won't you? She's a rascal, that one, but hey. Douglas and I can handle her. I miss you all. Same. Heave! Ho! I clamber into the ship just as Douglas and Bagheera push it into the water. Off the side, I see the two sisters in one final lopsided embrace. The sight is bittersweet, but I know the depth, but I know that deep down this is what Grace has always wanted. It's better this way for all of us. As I pull the ropes and hoist the sail, I call back. Bulgare, Douglas, take care of you, you and yours. I expect to find actor Craig no worse for wear upon our return. It won't be the same without you around, but we'll make do. Come back to us. And don't worry about us. You worry about yourself, lad. Remember, trust your instincts. The two wave me off, with Douglas still frowning and shaking his head. Even his frustration can't bring me down. Not today on, eve on the eve of this much-needed holiday. I nearly drop the ropes as Grace pops up, brandishing an old bottle that looks like it came straight from the seafloor. I almost forgot! G what was that for? For good luck! It's the maiden voyage of the Kelpie, after all. Ready to set sail, Captain Campbell? I can't help but laugh as I tie the final knots and sit down beside the rudder. Full speed ahead! The ship jerks forward as Grace carries the ship faster than any wind will any wind could. Oh wow, that's oh it's beautiful. As we approach the mouth of the lock, I look back upon the green rolling hills. My home, or is it? It's not going anywhere, but I am. It's happening! I turn back to my girlfriend's full body. Oop. To my girlfriend's full body. Drifting beside me through the waves. She's my home. Wherever she goes, I'll have everything I need. The wind touches my face benevolently, caressing me in a way I welcome and crave. Free at last? Beyond these cliff walls, there's nothing to just there's nothing to box us in. Just you, me and the ocean. You're a sailor now, Malcolm. I'm not so sure about that. Not yet. Douglas's advice, though harsh, was wise. I still lack the confidence I probably ought to have in order to tackle the open ocean. But when I look at Grace, her majesty, her mastery of the water, her, her prowess, all my fears dissipate. She's now my anchor, my vessel, and my compass. And half my heart, more than half. I love you, Grace. And make you love the sea, too. Is this it? Is this the end of the build? Oh, no, maybe. I don't know. I'm, cu I'm confused. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, I'm gonna pause it right here for now. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's more, and I'll make a short video about it. Anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.